I'm Sophia. And we would like to um, welcome you to our Black History uh, celebration at NBC. Denzel Washington once said, at the end of the day, it's not about what you have or even what you've accomplished. It's about what you've done with those accomplishments and it's about who you lifted up, who you've made better. It's about what you've given back. And we know at the New Beginning Church that God is the ultimate giver. He gave his only son to die for us on the cross. We thank God for loving us and we thank him for saving us. Please join us in worship as we sing, Thank you, Lord, for loving me and he did it just for me. Oh, 
Scripture from Alexander. Our scripture for today is Ephesians 2, verses 8 through 10. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that none of yourselves it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Repeat after me. Greater is he. Greater is he. Who is in me. Who is in me. Than he. Than he. That is in the world. That is in the world. I can do all things. I can do all things. Through Christ. Through Christ. Who strengthens me. Who strengthens me. Prayer, Jonathan. día y um, también gracias porque hoy es un gran día orando um, gracias porque hoy estamos aquí y estamos leyendo la Biblia hoy todos estamos aquí y um, también gracias papá por todo lo que nos has ayudado con, con aquí todos y estamos jugando y también porque hoy estamos en y también por este tiempo que estamos aquí porque tú me estás dando tu mente no va
just for me. Jesus did it just for me. Black History Program. Go to Makosa. First, we're going to play an African selection um, on the xylophones called Makosa, and we're going to move on to a Harriet Tubman "Didn't Take No Stuff" poem, and we're going to sing uh, "They Took a Stand." We will be playing a xylophone selection called Makosa on the xylophones and drums. This piece uh, was originated from uh, Douala, uh, a city in Cameroon, uh, Africa. Uh, the word Makosa means to dance. The Makosa music is known for a strong bass rhythm. Listen as we, the xylophone ensemble, will play the selection called Makosa. Thank you. 
Every great dream begins with a dreamer. Always remember that I have the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars, to make your, to change the world. Harriet had a dream that she wanted to be free, and she set her mind to being free and helping over 300 slaves to become free. She found a way to make her dream come true. We will recite the poem, Harriet Tubman Didn't Take No Stuff by Eloise Greenfield. by Eloise Greenfield. Harriet Tubman didn't take no stuff, wasn't scared of nothing either. Didn't come in this world to be no slave and wasn't gonna stay one either. Farewell, she sang to her friends one night. She was mighty sad to leave them. But she ran away that dark hot night, ran looking for her freedom. And she ran to the woods, and she ran through the woods with the slave catchers right behind her. And she kept on going till she got to the north where those mean men couldn't find her. Nineteen times she went back south to get 300 others. She ran for her freedom nineteen times to save black sisters and brothers. Harriet Tubman didn't take no stuff, wasn't scared of nothing either. Didn't come in this world to be no slave and didn't say one either. And didn't say one either. What do Harriet Tubman, Rosa Parks, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., John Lewis, and Ruby Bridges all have in common? They all took a stand for freedom. They took a stand for human rights. They took a stand for justice all across this land. And people say it's never been that way, but they said freedom was a better way, and they were going to spread it all across this land. They all took a stand, and we will sing they took a stand. She took a stand. The song of freedom was her main refrain. Harriet Tubman took a stand. Of us. They took a stand, they took a stand, got on the train and rode on the bus. Everybody took a stand, and the people say it's gonna be this way. Gonna have freedom all across this land. It's a better way, it's a brand new day. Everyone took a stand, cause everyone took a stand.
Just in Jesus' name, we approach your throne of grace. Lord, we glorify you. We thank you again for just being good and being God. God, we thank you for holding us and keeping us. We thank you for giving us a right mind to worship you. We thank you, Father God, for stirring our spirit to honor you. Now, Lord, we come, Father God, as empty buckets before a full fountain. Lord, we ask you to keep us, hold us, and deliver us. Lord, we ask you to speak to us this morning that old habits will be thrown away and old burdens will be rolled away, that our lives will continue to glorify you and edify the body of Christ, that, Father God, we will show a light to this dark and dismal world. We thank you for your amazing grace, Father. We thank you for your mercy. We thank you, Father God, for giving us another chance. Now, Lord, we ask you to speak to us through your word, that your word will fall on good soil, that your word will make a difference, that your word will be fit for us to hold on to, and that your word will hold us in the hollow of your hand. It's in the strong, mighty, powerful, anointed name of Jesus Christ we pray, and we ask it all. Amen and thank God. Praise Him. Praise God. Praise God. Oh, praise God. 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 Hallelujah to the Lamb. We call your attention to 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. In the Old Testament, the book is 1 Kings. The chapter is 3. The verses are 10 through 14. 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 10 through 14. Thank you for having church twice a day <laughs> before 12 o'clock. <laughs> Thank you so much for for rushing and pushing and getting up early this morning to come together as a family Amen. to worship God. Pastor Mark Falls in the Double Portion Church really appreciate our presence and thank you for going to be with us. This our friend and ministry and our ministry partner. Let me say to the youth, this is what mission will look like. <laughs> this, is, this is full course mission, what you are doing today. 
you get a few hours of sleep and then you get up and you run all day and you get a few more hours of sleep and you get up and you run all day. Sometimes you have a chance to eat and other times you have to wait. Amen. Amen. That's why we carry snacks on mission. So you keep on running for the Lord. Amen. First Kings chapter 3 verses 10 through 14. When you found it, you will discover these words. The speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. Then God said to him, because you have asked this thing and have not asked long life for yourself, nor have you asked riches for yourself, nor have you asked the life of your enemies, but have asked for yourself understanding to discern justice. Behold, I have done according to your words. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there have not been anyone like you before you, nor shall any like you arise after you. I have also given you what you have not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall not be anyone you among the kings all your days. So if you walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as your father David walked, then I will lengthen your days. I want to talk about seek wisdom. Seek wisdom. God has given us one more chance to seek him. God has given us another chance to get it right. God has given us another opportunity to talk to him and to tell him just what we need and what we want. God has blessed us, not ourselves. The psalmist says we are the sheep of his pasture. He has made us and not we ourselves. It doesn't matter what family you come from. It is God who has blessed you. Doesn't matter what job you've been on. God has blessed you. It doesn't matter your 401k, your 403b, your annuities, your retirement. It is God who has blessed you. Everybody in this room looks pretty good, don't look hungry. Most of the children have awakened already. Look like they had a good night rest and they were prepared for worship this morning. I just want to tell you, it's not because you got a king size bed. It's because God has blessed you. And if we're going to move from this point to a better place, it's because God will bless us. The children tell the story of Harriet Tubman. They tell the story of John Lewis. They tell the story of Dr. Martin Luther King. They talk about Rosa Parks and how she refused to give up her seat. And it started a firestorm and it stirred up some people for righteousness. But had the leaders, as well as the people, not honored God, that, sa that same in that successful civil rights movement would have just fallen apart. This morning, those of you who were at the double portion church, I said to you, 
that they, some 600 people marched, attempted to march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge to fight for equal rights, to march for those who had been killed. And what I do want to tell you, the next trip they went to make across the bridge, Dr. King walked with them, and right before they got across the bridge, the wise leaders kneeled down. They stopped the people from going. They kneeled down and talked to God. And let me tell you, if you're going to be successful in life, you're going to have to call time out every now and then kneel down, intentionally give God your full attention and listen to God. They questioned Dr. King as to why didn't you keep marching? The governor said we can go now. The, the, the highway patrolman has ushered us to come on through. And, and then not only that, the, the marshals are, are with us now. Why didn't you go across the bridge? But Dr. King said to them, no, no, because they would have gotten us halfway across that bridge and closed off the bridge behind us and took us out and picked us out one at a time. Let me tell you, you ought to follow a leader who is sensitive enough to the Holy Spirit Sensitive to God enough to hear from God, even when it looks like a good opportunity to say, no, Lord, wisdom says, let's bow down. Wisdom says, let's hold. Wisdom says, let's hold off. Wisdom says, let's stop. In the text, in 1 Kings chapter 3, we will find a conversation going on between God and King Solomon. God is having a conversation with Solomon, and he asked Solomon one question, what would you have me to bless you with? With what would you have me bless you? It's your choice. And Solomon says, God, you have called me. In verse number, number nine, he says, God, you have called me, and you've given me all of these people. And Lord, I need to know one thing from you. Will you also give me wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as to how to go in and out before the people? Yeah, that ought to be the prayer. That ought to be the prayer of every leader. Whether you mama at home, whether you a manager on the job, whether you a husband at the house, whether you are in charge of a group of people, you need to humble yourself before the almighty God and ask God to give you wisdom as to how to go in and out before your people. Let me just share with you, young people, you got friends, you got cousins, you, you have people that you hang out with. You need wisdom as to how to handle your friends. You, you need wisdom. You need wisdom as how to, how to go in and out before them. You, you need wisdom as to what to say, when to say it, and how to say it. Because I've discovered, and I've, most of the time I've discovered the hard way, I've discovered it's not always what you say. But many times it's how you say it. Men in this room can testify. Sometime I say something, I got to use some extra words when I'm talking to her. Sometimes you have to think it through. You have to pray it through. You have to ask God to give you wisdom because what you say, how you say it, the way you say it, at the time you say it, can cause a shipwreck if you don't take all these things in consideration. That's why I tell folk who pop the pill, you better make sure before you go in the middle of any conflict, you call on God. And if you have a pill, it's time to take it. It's time to move forward. It's, it's time to get on board. It's, it's time to confront God with your issues before you get to the person who call you the issue. I remember, I remember, I remember growing up at, at the Homer Street Church, and, and all of a sudden I, I, I was after somebody because they had gotten after me in the church. They had just turned my afro upside down in the church. They had 
to stress my dandruff the wrong way in the church. They had gotten me to the point where I just wanted to do something to them right there in the church. And all of a sudden, I approached Pastor Manson Johnson, and my attitude wasn't right, and I had to apologize to him. And he said to me, there's no sense in you apologizing to me. You was turned upside down before you got to me. He said to me, he said to me, your life was already upside down. Your attitude was bad before you got to me. And he said, don't apologize to me. The person that got you that way ought to be apologizing to you. And let me tell you, if you're not wise, you can mess up a good job. If you're not wise, you can turn away from a great relationship. If you're not wise, you can get the faucet that feeds you turned completely off. If you're not wise, you'll be like some young folk who tell their folk, I can make it on my own. Give me what I deserve and let me get out of here and I can do it my own way. And some of my brothers tried that on my daddy. Daddy, I'm going to leave as if they're going to go and be the prodigal son. Daddy, I'm going to leave. I'm going to take my stuff. Daddy said, wait a minute. Hold your hold. What stuff do you own in this house? Matter of fact, get out of here, and when you go, you ain't got a suitcase to take with you because I bought the suitcase. You don't have anything to put in the suitcase because I bought the clothes. You don't have a sandwich. You don't have a sandwich by which you can eat because I buy the bacon, the eggs. I buy the bread. So if you want to go on, go on then. We have to be wise. And all of a sudden, wisdom just came all over that brother. All of a sudden, he got wise. All of a sudden, he realized that this ain't my house. This ain't my stuff. These are not my clothes. And even the bubble gum that I chew on the baseball field, daddy paid for it. So I might as well, might as well humble myself and be wise about it. Folk don't treat their children like that anymore. People, people let children run all over them now. They say anything to them. They, they act any kind of way. Well, let me just get personal with you. My daughter's a police officer. She's good at it. She skipped five tiers to become an investigator. And one day she decided, Brother Miles, she's going to talk to me on the phone any old kind of way. I mean, she's big shotting now. I can't tell you everything I said. <laughs> Brother Sam, I'm going to tell you the summary of what I see. I said, girl, I will drive 50 miles and beat you flat down in your uniform with your taser on your side and your gun on the other side. You are not going to talk to me like that. All of a sudden, wisdom kicked in. All of a sudden, she became my little baby girl again that, that's so meek, humble, and mild. And I said, matter of fact, when I get there, they're going to say, why didn't she tase that man? Why did she let him treat her like that? Well, because before she was two years old, I put fear of her heart in her right then and there. You may do anything around anybody else. You may talk to anybody else that way. But when I get through with you, the president of the United States of America, the National Guard, the Army, Ghost, Coast Guard, and Marine won't be able to shut me down. You have to get to a point in your life where you have wisdom. I was looking at Sister Davis, Davis, Sister Nicole Davis back there, and the man sitting next to him, her, she was all on his shoulder, all whispering in his ear. It's because he had set a standard that it doesn't matter if you're 50 or 55. You steal my little girl, and you're going to act as such. And it doesn't matter how old your parents get. It doesn't matter if you can take your one finger and push them down. It's because of the respect that they have given you from a child that you're going to respect them the rest of your life. You're going to look after them. I always tell young folk that they ought to get a point in your life 
where you take care of mom and daddy, big mama, granddaddy, and they no longer have to take care of you. When wisdom kicks in, life is made the better for everybody involved. Solomon, Solomon, Solomon is a wise man. Why you choose Solomon? Well, 1 Kings chapter 3, verses 1 through 15 is a pericope. And when I, when I put the pericope up there, y'all, what you, you have to do is go back after I get through and read the whole pericope. And that pericope will set the stage for you and let you know what's really going on. Also, uh, the Song of Solomon, verses, uh, chapter 1, verses 5 and 6, Solomon says, My skin is black. And he talks about the fact that the sun has dyed my skin. Let me tell you something, Jonathan. You that color because God made you that color. You are dark because God made you dark. You, your skin has been burned. Your ancestor's skin has been burned by the darkness, by the sun, and now you dark. So you ought to strut in it. You ought to thank God for it. You ought, to, you ought to walk with God. You ought to make sure that you give God the glory for whatever you are. Whether your lips are thick, whether your botox is round or flat, whether your waist is a 26, whether your, your waist is a 55, you ought to honor God for what God has done. I think the songwriter, I think the songwriter messed us up in the 70s. It said, ooh wee, she is a brick house. And then he says she is 36, 24, 36. And women since that day been looking to get 36, 24, 36. And let me just share with you, honey, God didn't make everybody like that. You got to be proud of what God has done in your life because he made you just like you are. You can exercise, you can eat well, you can get plenty of sleep, and if you're still that size, praise the Lord for what he has done. Don't let Instagram fool you. Don't, don't let Facebook get under your skin. <laughs> Don't let what your friends say to get next to you. Because let me just serve you notice, some men just like thick women. Uh, the text, the text, the class, the text, the class, the text, the class that Solomon had a decision to make. And in this decision, he decided to not ask for what we would ask for. If I went around the room and I, I asked the question, what would you ask God for if you had one thing to ask God for? What, what would you ask God for? And, and, and we, I get a number of things. Somebody thinking right now, if God just give me $10 million, I, I'll be satisfied. But let me tell you, an a undisciplined person, Brother Irvin, with $10 million will be broke before the sun goes down. An undisciplined person, you can give some people $5 and they can do more with $5 than some can do with $25. Let me tell you, if the Lord bless me or when the Lord blesses me, if he blesses me with $10 million, I will have $10 million plus when Jesus gets back. The Bible talks about in Matthew chapter 25 that the, that, that the, 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 the owner gave his servants some talents. He gave them some money. He gave them money. He gave them money. He gave them money. And he gave it in different denominations. He gave them in different spreads. Let me tell you, God gives you what you can handle. The one that he gave one talent to, he came back to see what he had done with everybody else, then increased their talents and doubled their talents. He comes back with the one that he's given one talent to. God knew that he couldn't handle but one. He gave him one talent, Sister Irvin, he gave him one talent, and when he got back, he going to tell the owner what the owner is like. He says, look, let me just tell you, I knew you were a hard man, reaping where you don't so, I know you a hard man where you expect something from nothing. Now, here it is. He's giving it to him. 
And now the one who received going to tell the giver what the giver is like. And so what he does, he went and he planted it or he put it away. And he says, here's your one talent. The owner says, you shiftless. You lazy. You sorry servant. And he took that one and gave it to the one who had the most. And he pushed him out into outer darkness. If you're wise, if you're wise, you'll save your money. If, if you're wise, you won't, you, the old folk would say, boy, a rainy day is coming. Save some for a rainy day. And they're not talking about moisture falling from the sky. They're talking about trouble is going to hit. And when trouble hit, you have to be prepared. Solomon, King Solomon said, Lord, you've given me these people, and I want you to give me wisdom as to how to go in and out before these people. Let, let me show you. First of all, there, there, is, there is the ask. There's the ask. He, he asked. He asked God. You need to know who to ask. You asking me. I can give you $5, but I can't give you what you need. I can give you two, three dollars, but I can't give you what you need. You asking me, I, I can give you food, but I can't give you what you need. First of all, you need to ask the right person. You need to make sure you get in a conversation with the right person. The problem is many times we are talking to the wrong person about the wrong things that really can't help us. We've gotten to a point now where we just like talking. I mean, counselors are making billions of dollars because folk just want to talk. I mean, they just sit and they, they, uh, psychologists just sit and listen. And when they leave, everybody feels better. The patient feels better because somebody has listened. But most of all, the psychologist feels real better. And it's because, <laughs> it's because if we use wisdom, God can speak to us. If we use wisdom, God can bless us. If we use wisdom, wisdom is that understanding that God wants to give you that all you have to do is ask. The proverb writer, we ought to read Proverbs because it gives us wisdom. We ought to ask wisdom of God. And then we ought to hang out with wise people. I'm so glad that our young people hang out with wise people. People that's going, now let me tell you, if you hang out with a wise person, and let me tell you, they won't, they won't say everything you want to hear. If you hang out with a wise person, they won't let you go down the wrong road, the wrong way, and do the wrong thing. If you hang out with a wise person, you need to understand that a wise person is not going to just be your friend. A wise person is going to tell you when you're wrong. So first of all, there's the ask. You, you need to ask. How many of you been asking? You need to ask God to bless what you've done. Ask God to bless you in the direction you're headed. Ask God to keep you holy. I didn't say keep you saved, but keep you holy. Keep you separated from sin. Keep you set apart. Ask God to help you to make wise decisions. How many people you know, not people in this room, but at the church around the corner down the street. How many of you know somebody who made a decision just off the cuff? Just a sporadic decision. And when they made that sporadic decision... Now they look back and wonder, why in the world did I do that? Let me tell you, the guy talking to you right now, I got a list of them. <laughs> I got a shoebox of them. I got a croaker sack of them. A lot of decisions that I made and I didn't consult God. And they ended up a mess. And let me share with you, if you make a mess of your life, it doesn't just affect you. It affects everybody in your circle. 
As a matter of fact, it affects everybody that's not in your circle. Every drunk driver that decides to take off down the street, hit five or six cars, they, they're affected. Kills one or two people, that everybody's affected. And then everybody who's in that circle affected. Make wise decisions. So we need to ask. Ask God. And then we need an answer. We need, to, we, need to ask, we need to ask God, and then we need an answer. And when we get the answer, we need to address the answer. Ask God. Oftentimes people say, well, I am going to pray about it. And I ask them right there on the spot, what is God going to say about it? Why, why do you ask him? I ask them, what is God going to say about it? Simply because I already know that you made up your mind. You're just going to ask God and you're not waiting on God's answer because God doesn't answer when we want him to. The senior saint says he may not come when you want him, but he's always on time. And because I trust God to be always on time, I want godly wisdom, not my wisdom. Wisdom is something you can't, you can't address in the school system, especially the Houston independent school system. You, you can't get it from the superintendent. You, wisdom is something you can't get from the state house, especially the governor of the state house. Wisdom is not something you can go and buy because you got a lot of money. God bless you with money and that's good, but you can't buy wisdom. It has to come from spending time with God. So you got to ask God. Then you got to look for God to answer you. And you may have to wait on him. But Isaiah says, if you wait on him, he will renew your strength. It will mount up with wings like eagles. If you wait on him, you, young folk will be fainting. Young people will be falling out. But if you wait on him, you will mount up with wings as eagles. You will run and not get weary. You will walk and not faint. If you wait on him, God can bless you and God can keep you. So... Solomon didn't ask for riches, but he, God gave him the answer. Verse number nine, therefore give me as I judge your people as I go in and out before this great people that you have given me. Solomon says, give me wisdom. Verse number 10, you see, God, it pleased God because Solomon didn't ask for stuff. He didn't ask for things. He didn't ask for stuff to make him happy. It pleased God. Verse number 11, then God said to him, because you have asked this thing, because you have asked for wisdom, because you have asked for an understanding as to how to go in and out before the people, because you have not asked in a very selfish way, because you haven't asked selfishly, I'm going to give you wisdom. And not only am I going to give you wisdom, I'm going to give you a lot more than wisdom. He says, because you've asked this thing, because you've asked this thing in this way, and you have not asked for long life, I'm going to give you long life. Because you've asked for wisdom, and, and you have not asked for riches, I'm going to give you wisdom, and I'm going to give you riches. Because you have not asked for riches, because you haven't asked for long life, and because you have not asked me to kill your enemies, I'm going to make your enemies your footstool. Because you have not asked for me to do these things, I am going to give you wisdom so you can discern justice, this, so you can have a good understanding. I mean, sometimes we think that we just got to do some things. I got to make some things happen. I got to do some things. And there are some times that we ought to pray. And there are some times we need to perform or participate. But we need wisdom as to when to do it, how to do it. I told a brother the other day, I said, brother, just do this. You work like it's all dependent on you. And I pray like it's all dependent on God. If you work like it's all dependent on you, and I pray like it's all dependent on God, we ought to be able to come together and God will give us great success. 
But here, there's an ask, there's an answer, and there's an acceptance. Who wouldn't accept this? Behold, I have, I have done according to your word. See, I have given you a wise and understanding heart. God is talking. So that there has not been anybody like you before, and there will be no one like you after. Solomon. Solomon says in Psalm of Solomon, my skin is black. It says to us, regardless of who we are, God hears our prayers. God hears what we have to say. God not only hears our prayers, he hears our hearts. And the psalmist said, God has not forgotten you. God is yet here. He hears you. The psalmist declares that he leans down and he inclines his ear to hear you. God hadn't forgotten you. How many of you need to know that this morning? How many of you need to know that God is still on his throne? God has not forgotten you. How many of you need to know that God is still lending a listening ear to you? How many of you know that God hears you and he will answer you and whatever God answers is, it's the betterment for us. Next thing you got to do is make some adjustments. You got to make some adjustments. You got to address what God answers, but we have to make some adjustments. Henry Blackaby, and if you, you're in Bible study, that's a good thing. If you're not in Bible study, you need to get in Bible study. We're doing through the series, Experiencing God. It may take us the whole year because we wanted to dig in. And if you need a book, I got three left. <laughs> it is going to cost you. Invest in your future. Henry Blackaby says this. There ought to come a point in your life where you understand that not God, but you need to make some adjustments. Am I the only one that would testify that I need even today to make some adjustments? I need to make some adjustments. I need to make some things. Uh, the, the, the children sung the song and they said that it's always been this way. And it's always going to be this way. Just go somewhere and sit down. Dr. King comes back and says, if not now, when? If not here, where? If not now, what we going to do? Just sit down and let it happen. We have to get to a point in our lives where we understand that we have to make personal adjustments. As we have wisdom, we make those adjustments through wisdom. Because God has a way of blessing us. He says, now you didn't ask for any of these things, but I'm going to give you an understanding heart. I'm going to make you rich. And I have also given you, not what you've asked, both riches and honor. God has a way of giving us riches and honor. And I'm telling you, we ought to have riches and honor. Too many times people tell you, look, uh, I'm going to heaven because I'm broke. You're not going to heaven because you're broke. There's some broke folk going to hell. I'm telling you, you might as well enjoy what you have on this side because if you are born again, if you are saved, we're going to really turn it up on the other side. You think you're asking the question now, turn up for what? God is really going to lay it out for us. He's laying it out for us now, but he's sure enough going to lay it out for us later on. If you're saved, if you're born again, you're going to, to love what you do down here, and you're going to love what God does over there. He says, he says, verse 14, he says, so if you walk in my ways, if you keep my statutes, if you keep my commandments, if you walk as your father has walked, your father David, then I will give you lengthen of days. I will lengthen your days. I will give you long life. Anybody want long life? Anybody want to live? Well, I always say, Lord, you can give me long life, but I want to be healthy and able to get around on my own. 
I want to be able, it, Lord, because if, if I'm not going to be able to get around on my own, Lord, go ahead and let me foul out with, the, with this world and leave this world and turn this world loose. Because I know over there, there will be rejoicing and there will be victory. That's why suicide shouldn't be an option. Because God has things under control down here. That's why low self-esteem should not be on your agenda. Because God has things under control down here. That's why you can't be upset of, what, of who you are and what position you're in. Because God has things under control over here. So we want God to bless us. How many of you want God to bless you? I mean, don't, don't get involved in get-rich-quick schemes. Lady came to me and said, look, hey, you got the credit we need. We want you to join in with us. And we want to buy these buildings. And they show me these buildings on, on Google Earth. They, we want you to buy, we gonna, the three of us going to buy these warehouses in San Antonio, Texas. And, and we're going to use your credit <laughs> Brother Carter, I said, we're going to use your credit and we're going to get these $5 million buildings and by the end of the year, it's going to turn over $25 million. I mean, wisdom said to me, I started thinking, I, I'm not the smartest and not the sharpest knife in the draw. I'm not, I'm not the sharpest knife in the draw. But if, if you're smart enough to turn over five million to become 25 million, you don't need me. Matter of fact, the next thing I thought, if you're able to do it, then you don't need me to come on board. And the next thing I thought about is that your, your credit gets jacked up because you made decisions. Now you're trying to get me, Sister Poe, to get my credit jacked up. And you ain't talking about $200,000. You're talking about five million dollars. And man, you can get rich quick. I mean, you can, you pay, and they, they love using this on pastors. You can pay this church off. You can pay. And what they are saying is, we're going to use you for what you can do for us. And after we use you for what you can do for us, then we're going to discard you. But when wisdom kicks in, when you walk in with God as David did, when wisdom kicks in, you will say, I work hard to get what I want. And as I work hard to get what I want, it's guaranteed that nobody will show up to take it from me. Just, just work hard. It's no problem with working hard. God told Adam, you're going to work so hard that you're going to have sweat on your brow. <laughs> Young men, don't get caught up in drug deals. Young girls, don't get caught up in prostitution. That money will leave you overnight. And young women, stop letting old trifling men that need, mean you nothing tell you that you're going to be a superstar. Work for the Lord. Have your heart turned toward him. Use wisdom and watch how God is able to bless you further than any other man, woman, boy, and girl can bless you. Stay on task. Stay on task. Stay, on, stay focused. Stay focused. The good thing about young people, in order for them to play music, in order for them to do robotics, they got to stay focused. And if their minds stray, you just miss the whole list of notes. One thing they told us in electronics, you're going to have math every day. Get used to it. And not only are you going to have math five days a week, when you get home, you're going to have to do some math to keep up. You're going to have signs every single day, every single day of the week. And when you get home on the weekend, you're going to have some signs. Because if you miss the basics, that's why children go off to college. Where's Hazelin? That's why children go off to college. Hazel is my is my beating my beating post these days. She's she's the one that's that we're so proud of, and we want to still be proud of her, right? We we just so we just so proud of Hazel that that she gonna walk out with a degree and a diploma. We we're just proud of her, and but Hazel, that's why when children go off to school, ooh we I'm away from grandmama now. Ooh we I don't have to get up when I don't want to get up. I don't have to go to class if I don't want to go to class. And then they back home. 
Don't be ashamed to come home, but don't do anything to get you back to the house. Move on your own decisions. You can't spend so much time in the club. You can't spend so much free time. You can't spend time. When I was in school, you spend time in the student union. Now children don't even live on campus. They got their own apartments. I'm like, what? What? Own apartment? I remember having a, a, a onion and an egg. And it had to last me until the cafeteria opened up the next morning. An onion and egg, that's it. We have to get to a point where we operate in wisdom. Solomon operated in wisdom. The report came out last week that, that African Americans will not be as prepared financially when they retire as their white counterparts. It says that the average African American will be working when they're 75 years old in a, a um, minimum wage job, even when they're 75. Let me tell you, when you get 75, you ought to have prepared yourself through wisdom where you don't have to hit a lick at a snake. Matter of fact, you ought to be able to call the man next door and say, there's a snake out here at my house. Come on over here, I'll pay you $20 to take care of him. <laughs> but you have to be prepared. <laughs> You, you have to be prepared. You have to be prepared. See, Sister Davis leaning on her daddy because she want to make sure that he's preparing for her. <laughs> when she ought to make sure that she's preparing to take care of him. When we are prepared, God is able to bless us in such a way we don't have to ask anybody for anything. We don't have to go anywhere and get anything. We don't have to steal anything. We don't have to lie about anything. We need to understand that God has all the resources because he is the source. Seek wisdom. Seek wisdom so that, so that we can change the trajectory of our lives. Seek wisdom so, so we can make sure we hang out with the right people. If you're about to have a baby, you need to be praying for that baby right now. Lord, bless this baby to be a godly baby. Lord, bless this baby's spouse. That the, the, I mean, an unborn baby. Bless this baby's spouse that they will have good sense and they will love the Lord. And bless, bless my baby that my baby don't have to go through all this drama that I see these days. Lord, bless my baby that my baby will walk uprightly before the Lord. Lord, bless my baby that my baby will come out healthy and be able to think and reason for him or herself. Lord, bless my baby that my baby will, will be able to honor senior citizens and not be disrespectful. You need to be praying right now. And if your baby is already here, you sure need to be praying. Because the Lord just dropped off a baby into a messed up world. And it's just wisdom. God was so wise until he prepared us over 2,000 years ago. He prepared us for adjustments. He prepared us for salvation. He prepared us for what we did ask and what we didn't ask. He did it through Jesus. Jesus died on Calvary just for you. Jesus died just for you. Jesus died so you can have wisdom. He died. They buried him in a borrowed tomb just for you. Early that third day morning, he rose with all power and heaven and earth in his hand. We seek wisdom. We seek God. We want God to make a difference. We want God to say yes. The Bible says that Solomon's prayer, Solomon's dream became true because he honored God and God was pleased. Is God pleased with you? Is God bragging on you? Is God able to give you whatever you ask is he able to give you that which you have not asked? Is he able to give you more than what you have? God is concerned about the non-tangible things. Things you can't see. God is concerned about it. 
The first thing he's concerned about is your soul. You must be. You got to be. You have to be born again. If you want to receive Jesus as your personal Savior, will you bow your head with me and invite Christ into your life? Say, Lord Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. I believe that you died for my sins. I believe that you rose from the dead. Come into my life. Make me a new person. 